Hi, and welcome to another video. Recently I've been busy as I've been doing a couple of different things. One of them was ditching my old Vim configuration and moving to something new based on Lunar Vim. I will also make a video about Lunar Vim and my new configuration later on, but in this video we will focus on this plugin Flutter Tools and .nvim because I also decided to move out of COC as some of you have suggested to this plugin Flutter Tools. So let's have a look into this plugin for a moment. First of all, uh, we can see what it actually is. So here in the first acabit, it builds Flutter and Dart applications in NeoVim using a native LSP. It adds the ability to easily launch Flutter applications, debug them, extend LSP functionality such as widget guidelines, outline view, and so on. And here is a very important thing to note that this plugin is not actually aiming to provide you functionality from LSP. It's using the LSP that is already built in into NeoVim. You have to configure the LSP yourself, the Dart language server, in order to be able to use it as you want. But this plugin is not about this. They only give you a little bit of information how to set it up or how to start with LSP. So if we scroll down through all the installation and so on information, you can see first of all that we should use Lua because this plugin is written in Lua and it uses Planetary as well. So whether you're using your Vim script or Lua, you will have to actually use Lua. And it comes with a couple of interesting features. So first of all, it can be used to run or start the application to hot reload or restart it, things like that. Secondly, it can run emulators. You can introduce, of course, a device inside of it. Then it has this nice feature to um, visualize colors, which I've tried to do before with different plugins, but there was always some problem. So it's very nice that this is already included over here. Another thing is visualizing logs. And you can see that it opens this extra window over here with visualize logs and it adds some colors. But honestly, I had some problems with these colors and so I had to install a different plugin to handle coloring this output. Then it also has this widget guidelines over here, which we know from other IDEs as well, and outline video so we can navigate easily through the project. Finally, also closing tags and adding some information to a status line. Like for example, here they added the version of their application to the status line. Down here in the user check section, we can see all the commands that this plugin is providing. So for example, we have Flutter Run, which will help us with running the project. All right, so let's move now to my Lunar Vim. It's no longer just NeoVim, it's no Lunar Vim. And let's open, let's say, my Dart. Here we go. And now let's use the command Flutter Run. And here we go. Let's select Windows. On the right side, you can see that we have this output lock and that's it. The application is being run right now. Let's give it a moment. Here we go. The application started. Then Flutter comes with a couple of other things as well. So we can go through all of these commands over here as well as in documentation. So the first on the list is to copy a profiler URL if you need to go to profiler. We can detach Flutter. We can open DevTools from here. Then we can also activate the DevTools and we can display Flutter devices. So this is this box that we've seen already before. Let's try again. And then we can also show the Flutter emulators, but I don't have any running right now. We can clear the lock. Here we go. The lock is cleared. We can restart the LSP if there is any problem with, with the language server. Here is another for opening DevTools. So let's do that. Here we go. It opened DevTools in a browser now for us. Let's keep going. So then we have open outline. Let's do that. And here is, well, okay, my file is not maybe the best file to showcase the, out, uh, the outline right now. Uh, do I have anything better? Here we go. So let's close that. Let's go here. Let's make it slightly bigger. And you can see we have a very nice outline. If you are using some nice nerd fonts, then you also get all the icons over here. So that was outline open. Then we have outline toggle, which does the very similar thing. It opens or closes the outline. Then you have pub get, pub upgrade, quit. So if you are running an application, you can use then quit to close it. So we have the application over here. If I run flutter quit now, there we go. Application finished. And we have some feedback here in the loop. So then we also can reanalyze, we can reload, restart, run, we can do super call, which will go to super of the implementation. So if we have some class, it has a super, so we can use that. And we can also visualize debug. The only one comment that I'm missing over here is maybe to toggle on and off this lock over here. So there is only a, like, if you're running flutter run, then this 
window will open and then you don't have an option to just toggle on off easily. So instead you have to just go between buffers, so navigate from buffer to buffer to actually find the buffer that has the output if you accidentally close it like myself right now. So I can still navigate to it through buffers. Of course, there is no need to type in or search for all these um, commands over here and every time. The natural way to do is here to create some key mapping. So for example, I will have um, leader capital F and then some other like R for example to run. However, this is something that we will go through again in another film when I will be showcasing my new configuration once it's done because it's not done yet. So of course if you are using flutter run then you can give it different parameters same like you would be using the typical flutter run command in a command line not in vim. There they also show you how the flutter outline works over here and finally we have a little bit of configuration for this plugin. So we can decide for example how the borders will look like for different um, boxes that get open with options. Here is the configuration where we can specify that we want to see the app version in the status line and also information about the device that we have connected. Then we have also the bugger integration. So this is something I didn't try yet and um, I will not include it in this video because if I will finally give it a try then I would like to make a complete separate video about the DAP. You can set up the path to your Flutter uh, installation. You can also select that you are using FVM if you are. Um, you can turn on off the widget guidelines. Here is some settings as well for the closing tags, for the dev log, um, whether where it should open for example. Same for the dev tools, you can set to auto start it as well on the start of the application. Also for outline, so we can for example auto open as well if you would like that. And there is some settings also to some LSP related configs, so we can change the colors, so the color settings we've seen because it's actually coming from the LSP. So we can set that we want for example the color to be displayed as a background or we can set that the color should be displayed as a foreground, stuff like that. And finally we get also some on a touch callback which we can just do something in this case and we have some general settings in the end like show to do's, you can disable snippets over here. Finally if you would be interested to go a little bit into some unstable territory then there are some other options on decorating the status line. And also if you are using telescope, which I am now using, uh, before I've been using the FZF plugin to my, as a, my fuzzy finder, now I'm using telescope because Lunar Vim comes with telescope by default. So we can also have this very nice window where you can scroll through all the available commands with descriptions for Flutter tools. Finally, which is again something I'm currently not using because I'm trying to keep all my projects at the latest Flutter version, you also have F VM uh, support so you can have some extra window where you can change Flutter SDK easily with this plugin. And here is the debugging section and if I will make another video about debugging then we will come back here. Finally a small FAQ so if you have some problems with LSP. Here is some short comment which you can use if you want to see logs of the LSP and maybe find if there was any error. But all in all that's it. So that's what the Flutter Tools plugin does. The Flutter Tools plugin does just this. It doesn't do auto completion. So for example if I have my example over here and you see I have this competition over here, this is not coming from the Flutter plugin. So if we open now some, I don't know, boxes here over here and if you see we have this code action like wrap something with center, let's do six, there we go. This is also not coming from this plugin. These kind of things are coming from the LSP itself which is separately configured which is integrated with NeoVim as well, uh, support for LSP at least. You don't have to have it installed for every language but the support is integrated. And that's it. Oh, you can see also this red color over here done for me nicely. That's everything about the very helpful Flutter Tools plugin written in Lua. I hope this video will help you a little bit to understand how Flutter Tools work, what Flutter Tools actually is and most importantly what Flutter Tools is not doing for your Vim. As always, if you have any issues, go to the documentation, check out this GitHub page and finally if you can find answer to your question then go also to issues and post some issues in the library. But for now, I coach you to dev and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.